to yeah. get asked. Do I go on holidays? Yeah. What do you want? No, no, what no, are your top I'm, five? I'm, could do everything. Let's I do everything. Have, that, that's one of those things uh, that's very clear. I don't go on any, any holidays. Yeah. Never. And um, the reason is, <laughs> is um, I, you know, and even in the one place I did go, Sedona, Arizona, I didn't want to go. Uh, I wanted him to come here. And so I tried to uh, organise him to come to London and I'll organise the event rather than me go to Sedona. Mm -hmm. There was a reason for that because I had uh, have got kidney failure on an airplane. Mm -hmm. So I had a huge fear of going back on an airplane because I lost 70% of my kidney function on one flight. I had 30% left. So to go on another airplane again was terror and death to face that. But then I had this thing where I said, I'll, I'll bring you over here. And he said, yes. And I was organising, I was going to alternatives, I was going to College of Psychic Studies. And I was saying, like, and they saw his credentials and they all said, yes, we'll have it. And, um, and then he, he changed his mind. So I said, OK, I have to face the fear of death to go and meet him. Will I put my life on the line to meet my spiritual teacher? And I knew it was a yes. And Hawkins talks about the grace of the guru. Like, and this is something maybe we don't know in 12 steps, like there is an energy that gets transferred when you meet a person who has recovered. When you meet an enlightened teacher, there is a frequency that is transmitted to the student at the level of enlightenment. If I meet a recovered alcoholic and I'm an alcoholic, or if I'm a donut eater, a donut addict, and I meet a recovered donut addict, I get an energy from them. And that, that, that's what's not so well known. So, when I, so I knew I had to get his energy. He was at the level of the highest level of enlightenment. So I said, I'm willing to face death. And I think these symbolic things of the ego fearing death, in whatever form, death of, death of the body, death of the ego, are very powerful in ego deflation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because on a certain level, if you're giving your life and your will over to, to God, then can you be giving your life over, your physical life? Can you be giving your ego life over? So whenever you do something that threatens the core foundation of the ego, you usually jump up a lot in consciousness after you go through that and don't back down because it's too scary. Mm. For God, you know, because Hawkins for me was God's, um, how should I say, God's representative, you know, so to physically meet him. So I did, and you know, what happened was... Um, what about holidays now? No, no, I don't go on any, any holidays mm. now. I haven't gone on a, a holiday since I saw Hawkins uh, a long time ago. Is this talked about your health or you just don't want to? What if it I don't was a I don't want to go on a, I don't want to go, it's not, not any interest. Like, <laughs> let's go outside London to a park is not interesting to me. I mean, mm. it's like, it's like, I have zero interest in it because I'm trying to be, you know, I go through the thing and t people in 12 Steps know about geographicals. Mm. Yeah. Let me, let me describe what a geographical is. Mm. It's like, I would describe it in my terms, a ge you know, like, Oh, I have so many responsibilities in London. Oh, they, they, you know, there's so it's so crowded in London, um, and uh, and I feel really like bad in London. If I could just go to the Bahamas for a week, I would feel happy. I can see in the Bahamas. I'm going to be really, really happy. I won't have any troubles. The problem is London. I cannot be happy in London. I need the Bahamas to be happy. Now, for the way addiction works is. Um, if you want something and you get it, you, are, you become happy because you've got the thing that you think will make you happy. But in thinking that thing will make you happy, what you've done is you've had an ego inflation. So the, you're having the thought, when I go to Bahamas in six months' time, I'm going to be super, super happy because I'm going to be away from London. Then when you go there, you get a high. And you, you'll know from 12-step groups that people go and live in other countries. They'll say, I'm going to go to Spain I'm not going to live in London, and I know I'll be happy in Spain. And then they're happy for six months, and then they have to work. Mm -hmm. And then after a period of time, they're just as miserable in Spain. After the original high, the original honeymoon period, the ego's like excited, it's got its toy. So it's the idea that a ge geographical location is more better than now, than here. Then, so it's like to be, so my thing is to be, to transcend my ego as quickly as possible and not to divert it. So, I don't know, it might, be, might, might not be that grandiose, there's just no inclination for holidays in this consciousness. I don't know, 
I think I had past lives. I think spiritual work was more devotion. The idea of holidays just doesn't come to me. It wasn't even a hard thing to let go of. But I understood that. So, like, I want to be in a state, let's say, my ego would want to be in a state of bliss now. I know, like, uh, when I met one of my spiritual teachers in Brixton, you know, in Brixton, like, I was in, it was like a dark, dreary day. I was walking with horrific pain in my feet because I was going to meet a teacher of enlightenment in Brixton. And it was a dim, excruciating day. And he just asked me these questions, can you go to the observer, what's observing this? And then I went into a state of absolutely white light spiritual bliss. And I was walking out of his house in like ecstasy, just witnessing the beauty of everything, going on the tube, tears streaming down as I saw the divine beauty being witnessed in every single religion. It was like a piece of art on Brixton tube, you know. Mm. It was like so exquisite. So just from my own thing, it's like, like Brixton, the tube in Brixton, when you're connected, is just like the most exquisite spiritual experience you can imagine. I mean, so I know that the idea that I need to go to Bahamas, it's not I need to go to the Bahamas to be in a state of spiritual bliss. It's like I need to release my ego to be in a state of spiritual bliss. Mm. Even sitting down in a chair in spiritual bliss for like the rest of the day, just seeing the same kettle, you know, that's that be good for me as well, you see. But it's just that there's no connection that I need to go on a holiday to feel better. Okay. Any other questions? Be, yeah. Um, yeah. Escapism. I once I went four four holidays abroad yes. in one year. Yeah. And I got fed up with it and I thought it was like <laughs> escapism. <laughs> yes, yeah. so And you so, have to take you wherever you go. Yeah. 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 I mean that's yeah. the ego gets excited in the beginning. Yeah. And then after a while so it's like for me it's like it's inefficient inefficient. Why not be happy in London? Why should I try and why do I have to go to the Bahamas? And anyway, I'd rather work on why if I had the desire to go to the Bahamas to be more happy, I'd be willing to transcend that. Mm-hmm. Why have I got what thoughts in me uh want think that the Bahamas is better than London? Let mm-hmm. me place that into God's infinite light and love. Let me well, the Bahamas is special. Okay, let me make a photo of Bahamas, a photo of London. Like, London is just as meaningless as the Bahamas, which, you know, a tropical palm tree is as meaningless as a table, which is as meaningless as a plant. So I strip this magical association that the Bahamas is more... But for me, London is not... You know, London is like... The potential for bliss in London is in every moment. It's just that my ego is hooking into stuff. Yeah. If in this moment I've got a fear about work tomorrow and, uh, or I've got, I'm worried about what people are thinking of me or whatever, that's stopping the bliss now. Not, this, this room is no different to the Bahamas. You know, so, any other questions? Mm-hmm. Yes, top five books, apart from, you're not allowed to mention Dr. Hawkins, Oracles and Miracles, top five of your lifetime you read. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, invite Lord if you need the help. Uh, apart from Hawkins, uh, oh. oh my God, uh, top five book. I mean, I have all of Hawkins' books, so I'm not answering your question really well. Um, yeah. And uh, what, what else? You know, I read, I read The Course of Miracles. He's not Hawkins, so that, that's another book. I said it did oh, say Miracles. Oh my God. No. Okay. Um, uh, just imagine yourself a mastermind. Mastermind with Sabia. I don't, yeah. you know, I mean, I read fantasy books for distraction. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't call them top books. They're more like distraction. Mm. I, I, like, I used to really love, I guess if, you, if you're speaking to the kid in me, it'd be thing like Lord of the Rings. Uh, Lord of, yeah, Lord of the Rings. I, I, I loved that as a kid. And if you probably said, do you want to read a fun book now? Again, I'd probably say Lord of the Rings. <coughs> <coughs> or if it was like watch a movie, I'd watch Star Wars, I was into Star Wars. But these are all like fantasy things before mm. the addicts will realise. I like wanted to go into a different world with dragons and princesses yeah. and and or into an, in a galaxy far, far away where, you know, there's Darth Vader and stuff. So that was the type of thing. Um when I heard it's very I mean yeah, so for distraction of fantasy books mm-hmm. and fantasy films, uh in terms of are there any useful books? Mm apart from Hawkins' books. Um, I'm struggling. Uh, I've read, uh, because once I, you know, like I was an addict and then suddenly I was exposed to Hawkins, very suddenly. And I had these amazing spiritual experiences. It was like a, 
it's like being cast with an iron brand for Wilkins. It's like I knew he was my teacher and it was like there was no doubt and there was also as soon as I heard, so I'm not, I'm not answering the question really well, as soon as I heard his work, like <laughs> Eyes at a Thousand and there is no other book out there that he's calibrated that's higher than a thousand and most of the other books are in the 900s or 800s, it was like is like my ego, like I can read a book, I can read the Course, well the Course of Miracles I do do because he recommends that, but that's 600, that's not even 1000. Mm. So, so you haven't read any other spiritual books? I have, mm. oh, no, I have, I have read, ah. I did read, and I can't remember oh, the names, so when I went into, when I was in the early days oh, going to Course yeah, in Miracles yeah. groups, okay. I bought a host of Course in Miracles authored books, mm. right. and they were beautiful. But I read them once, I didn't read them again, because I sussed out that they're probably in the high 500s. So they're full of love and forgiveness and really beautiful books. <coughs> but then my ego goes like, if that's 550, probably, because I can roughly gauge the calibration of a book by reading and the tone. Like if it's a non-dual book, then I know it's starting to go into the 600s. If it's more like, I forgive you, uh, and I forgive everyone in the room, then it's probably like in the high 500s. It's a book of forgiveness and love on a, on a separated level. So a lot of the Course in Miracles books, and I loved reading them once, but you know, like I haven't read them ever again, I think, mm -hmm. and I've lost them. I don't know where they are. So, uh, so I'm finding it difficult. I mean, definitely A Return to Love was one of the first books I read mm -hmm. that led me to, uh, no, it didn't actually, I, did, I read A Course in Miracles, Marion Williamson's book, when I was in addiction, before I had my spiritual experience. So I went, this is, I think this is hilarious, I was, in, I was like in insurance sales and in sales, in business sales, and I was into NLP, which is very manipulative, mm -hmm. like hypnotherapy and NLP, there's Richard Bandler, Paul McKenna, all the man manipulative stuff to really be as unspiritual and get you to buy what I'm saying, <coughs> without you know. So I found at the time, I wanted to find the best hypnosis NLP bookshop, it was called Compendium. Yeah. In, um, I did my research, like, that's the best the book time, yeah. to, get, um, to get all the hypnotherapy, all the cutting edge, how to manipulate people uh, stuff. So I went to this book in Camden at the time it was, and it was like, you know, like all these books from America which you can't get in mm. things, like a paradise of all these movies. And then I looked at this book, and there's a bookshelf, and Marianne Williamson's book was glowing at me. And I was in active addiction. It was like it was calling me, it was like lighting up. And I, and I couldn't help not buy that book, because something called me to buy the book. And I was in active addiction. I read it in active addiction, and I loved it, even in active addiction. Mm. And it talked about A Course in Miracles, and I went to the bookshop, and I read it, and I felt like puking up, and I started to read A Course in Miracles, because there was this lovely, easy-to-read book, and then I read The Course in Miracles, and I just shut it, put it back, on the bookshelf said, I'm not going to read that. And then I carried on with my addiction and, and left uh, uh, that. So that was, but then after I got into Hawkins, like I cannot read A Return to Love because for me that would be now going down to, I shouldn't say anything bad about Marianne, but it would be going down from Hawkins. And uh, so I just can't, it's like the thing of, so I, yeah, I have to give me a different question because I'm just going to justify why I can't think of other books. Mm, maybe someone else has some questions as well. What about the films? Yeah, now, here's the thing. Like, Hawkins has a book called Truth Versus Falsehood mm -hmm. and he's calibrated, like, 200 movies in there. So as soon as he calibrated movies, um, I was interested in watching movies. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, like, um, like... You know, things like Star Wars, Indiana Jones are sort of um, 300s. Gandhi was, I think, around, you know, the high 400s. Um, there, was a, there was a book called something like Deep Blue or something. The Big Blue. Big That's Blue. High, yeah. The Big Blue. Yeah, the, big big blue. Vessel. the Big Blue. The Big Blue at, at oh. 700. So suddenly there was one film. Amazing. There was Great. one film that was a uh, thing. And I remember it was a. I remember watching it and not connecting with it because everything was in slow motion, wasn't it? The little mm -hmm. clip, I found a little YouTube clip. It's like going underwater and seeing everything. But that was at 700. And I did read clips of people going to see the Big Blue and they were saying they were coming out in these day states, mm -hmm. miraculous day states. But I only watched it on a tiny screen on 
mm. on a, a little thing. So I didn't get the cinema thing. And it was like a little clip, so I couldn't quite connect. But Did it calibrate the shack? Um, I don't mm. think so. I think <coughs> this, Have you seen that? Uh, the shack. A lot of the, a lot of the books are around the three... Uh, um, around the three four hundreds, even like Gandhi was in the four hundreds, and that's but that really touched me because I guess I connected it from the heritage yeah, and everything. Uh, Gandhi, and that's in the four hundreds. There was a film that I watched. I tried to find the films, the highest calibrated films mm. in the list, and I can't really remember the title. There was a, a, a little boy, and uh, and it was in the war, and there was someone looking after him in the war, um, yes. and French. Uh, no, I don't know if it's French, but he would forgive everything. The little boy would forgive everything that happened. Mm. And uh, which book did it? Uh, um, it's in uh, it's in this book, so I can probably work. Okay, okay. okay. I can have a look at it on camera. Um, but uh, movies, okay, classical. Like I actually got this book, Truth vs. Falsehood. Like all the music was calibrated the highest I wanted to listen to. So I got like Bach, uh, mm. Bach, Beethoven, and Mozart, and there's one Peckerbell's Canon, especially mm. Robert Gass Peckerbell's Canon, is like way up there. So I listen to that all the time, and it's like that's my go-to music in the background. Yeah, you can get it on YouTube. Um, Peckerbell's Canon uh, by Robert Gass on YouTube, and you can get like half an hour, and you can listen to it for free. I got the CD, and I always listen to that because it's like the highest calibrated music he recommended. So I'm always listening to that in the background. And um, movies, um, what Hawkins said, uh, one of, yes, you know, someone mentioned planes, trains, and automobiles. Oh, I did, I mentioned that, didn't I? Yes, yeah, so um, that was one of, that's like a funny film with, uh, what's that guy with white hair? Um, American, American guy, he's quite funny, in it. anyway, he's quite old. Anyway, so there is, and there's this John Candy, isn't it, the big, the big guy? The big guy John John Candy's in there, and there's the, another comedian with white hair um, in there, and it's just hilarious. You know, you're just laughing. Um, you have to watch the film because I can't. But I just ended up laughing, and I could. It's one of those things I could watch again and laugh again. Mm. Like some things, once you've heard the joke, you can't laugh again. But I could laugh again on that film. It just worked for me. Hawkins said that when you're laughing. Uh, laughter calibrates up in you know at high high five hundreds. You're not thinking when you're laughing, mm -hmm. so you're in actually quite a spiritual state. So one of his tips, and he talked about uh, this guy called Cousins, and then many of you might have known that in the mid 1980s, who cured himself from cancer mm -hmm. by just watching funny movies over and over again. Mm -hmm. And Hawkins Hawkins said that, and it came up as that's a tool for you to use mm -hmm. if you are feeling like negative something, just put some comedians on, and I'll do that even now. Like I'll just put in stand-up comedy onto YouTube, mm. and just uh, and just see what comedian will make me laugh. And if they keep me laughing, I'll laugh, because that's a very high state if you're laughing non-stop, so you're releasing a lot of stuff. So I will watch sometimes some stand-up comedy on YouTube, any comedian that makes me laugh. But anyone, I will switch it off if I think the comedy is... You know, is taking uh, the Mickey out of spirituality, or is sort of, um, yeah, in that way. Then I, I'll get a bad feeling not to watch that if they're like taking, the, making jokes about someone's faith or something. But um, uh, I like Gandhi. I like planes, trains, and automobiles. I, I just, I guess, I like. I mean, I like. Uh, this is from my addiction days, but I still like the guy, um, Eddie Murphy. Mm. Uh, you know. Uh, was it movies? Yeah, so there was something, I did watch it once, it was about a little kid, I can't remember, I can't quite find the section on movies in here, but there's a list of movies, so anything that calibrated high, anything that calibrated above 450, I wanted to watch, so there was a few films I watched, a lot of these films are around four, the high 400s, like Gandhi, mm -hmm. so I was really moved by Gandhi, uh, and then, um, uh, Big Blue 700, yeah. that's the highest, and then what's next? Oh. <coughs> There's some in the high 400s. There's one at 505, I think that was the one with the little boy. I think there's something, or 495. Um, 
475, The Colour Cloud Ball. No, I didn't watch that's that one. Like 490 is Empire of the Sun. Mm. That's it, Empire of the Sun. Oh, that one. Yeah, okay. Empire of the Sun. Uh, I watched uh, Empire of the Sun and I got that the kid, the little kid was uh, of unconditional love. It's like all these things are happening but he's still forgiving. Uh, I remember it vaguely, yeah. So that was my thing with movies. It's very interesting that there's just one that's above 500, like they're all... They're all in the... There are a few in the 400s, but yeah. there's only the big blue that's 700. That's right. I watched that over and over and over again. When what I was, was that? The, 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 big the big blue. blue. Oh, yeah. <coughs> the big blue. And 